Continues here at Sun Devil Stadium. Ducks have won eight straight against Arizona State. As always, Kaylee Hartung down at field level. Good evening, Kaylee. Hey there, Joe. Well, Todd Graham has been running this offense since 2007, and he says he has never had a team struggle to find its rhythm offensively like this one have. They didn't even have an offensive touchdown in their last game against Utah. They were missing their leading rusher, Jamario Richard, in that game due to a knee injury. He is back tonight. They have got to get him going. Him and also DJ Foster, the running back turned wide receiver, has over 2,000 yards rushing and receiving, but he struggled in his senior year. This staff looking for creative ways to get the ball in his hands tonight. Kelly, hopefully you've been staying dry down there as we had a good amount of rain prior to kickoff. 68 degrees, still a light rain here in Metro Phoenix. Oregon won the toss. They will receive. Mark Helfrich, a little different tone this year and message to deliver with what has been an up and down year. They were number seven in the polls when they had their early season showdown with Michigan State. Of course, Vernon Adams feeling better now. And Charles Nelson back deep to return for the Ducks. And from halfway into the end zone comes Nelson. We talked plenty about the Michigan State game and keep in mind when you look at the key results they had a fourth down incompletion with a minute left in that game. Utah was the stunner most points ever given up by Oregon at home 62 to 20 and more recently the bounce back against Washington. And as the California kid the grad transfer Vernon Adams the quarterback and we have some motion to start the game. Vernon Adams, you know the story of arriving at fall camp 11 days after it had started, waiting for the final results of that last class at Eastern Washington before he could officially transfer. And a quick pop right over the middle that time to Evan Bayless. Play action. Adams with time downfield. He's looking for Carrington. And he comes up with a great catch inside the 10. Koishi Brown had coverage, but Carrington came up big. It's been so big for this offense, getting their best pure wide receiver back in the lineup. Suspended the first six games. He's been a monster against Washington. Huge catch right now, and Oregon went sprinting down the field to get lined up. Looks like Vernon Adams right now having difficulty getting the call from the sidelines. That after the 46-yard reception, Adams and Royce Freeman, a sensational sophomore, in the backfield quickly this time to Brown and Jalen Brown is met right away you see the sheets the shields being held up there on the Oregon sideline as there had some concern about Arizona State potentially stealing signals we'll talk more about that a little later on for now second and goal as they come to the near side and tripped up at the seven yard line was Braylon Addison who missed last year with a knee injury he's their do it all guy you'll see him every which way in spots like that third and goal now for Adams to the end zone incomplete as Braylon Addison was covered by Kareem Orr, the true freshman, making his fourth straight start. Kareem Orr is a very talented true freshman. He's had a bit of a trial by fire this year, getting a lot of snaps. There's been times he's busted coverages. He's been beaten one-on-one, -on -one, but right there against a very athletic receiver, nice job in coverage. And Oregon scores on their opening drive. And here is White on a bouncer that he fielded inside the five. And he has wrestled down at the 22. Joe, and he's a fifth year senior, as you mentioned, that's waited his turn. He's got a lot of tools. He's got very good arm strength. He can throw it from the pocket and from the perimeter. He's going to have to make plays in the zone read game tonight, I think, with his feet as well. Richard and Foster in the backfield here to open up the offensive set for Arizona State. As Richard spins free, Demario Richard with a good gainer to get the night going. Finally taken down by 
Reggie Daniels. Mario Richard, sophomore from Palmdale, California. Very good player when healthy. He's banged up a little bit in that Colorado game, Jess. Well, he missed the Utah game with a knee injury. They're very excited to have him back. Big part of this rushing attack. And he gets the call on second and two, maybe just short of that line. Man. And it's really important that they're able to run the ball. We talked, you heard Kaylee talk about that in the open. They have to be able to have balance on offense. This offensive line has not done a great job getting push, I feel like, in their last two games against Colorado and Utah. Tonight, got to establish the line of scrimmage. Third and one, and that'll move the chains and more as he lowers his shoulder into Charles Nelson. Safety. It's a nice job by the offensive line, opening up a hole here to the left-hand side. When you watch Richard, gets good pad level, gets low to the ground, squares up those shoulder pads. He's a tough guy to bring down. This only goes for two that time, as it was Henry Mondu making the tackle. Richard remains in that pistol formation on second and eight. And not much that time on the inside is Mondu the first to get them and then cleaned up by Joe Walker, Oregon's leading tackler. Third down and five for Berkovici. Richard carried on all five plays so far, and now this. And that's incomplete as he was looking for Devin Lucian, covered by Robinson. Capable return man, Braylon Addison, had that 81-yarder for a touchdown against Michigan State. He's got to field it coming off of a left foot tonight of Matt Hawk. And it bounces harmlessly out of bounds is quite evident, especially on a night like tonight. And as this time Freeman is sent back. Stay. Royce Freeman has an opportunity tonight to have a monster game. When they bring all these extra bodies, if he can make a guy miss, he can put himself into the second level of the defense, and he could have some long runs tonight. Second and nine, Adams. And he quickly gets it to Bayless, who tried to reach ahead. Really a complete running back. Good runner in between the tackles and outside, but catches the ball extremely well. And there, a good example of solid pass protection. You see the screens there on the sidelines. Very, very hard to dissect the signals. You got five different signalers, and you got five different shower curtains in front of them. Third down and one. As Adams leaves the backfield and Freeman now on the direct snap good penetration into the backfield it was Fiso again with Lyman he sees the right guard pulling that's his key to come downhill and he meets the ball carrier right at the line of scrimmage very very good short yardage defense his best game as a duck average 45.6 against Washington Gump Hayes back to return and this is going to take a Ducks bounce, and a big one at that, inside the 20. To the center quad at James Madison, who ended up losing to Richmond. The Spiders got them that night. Swinging it this time for D.J. Foster, but unable to connect is Berkovici. They go back to Richard this time. This is where they have found at least some success. Joe Walker with another tackle. Well, they're averaging only 29 points a game. I think the biggest issue Arizona State has had this year, they just don't generate that many explosive plays. You haven't seen a lot of long runs by running backs. Receivers aren't getting any separation from DBs, and they're forced to go 8, 10, 12 plays to score, which is really hard to do drive in and drive out. They need big plays tonight. Third and four, Berkovici, and this is complete for a first down as he's able to find Foster. Guy from Scottsdale, over 2,000 yards rushing, 2,000 yards receiving in his career. Almost intercepted that time. All the running backs, you got to take a little something off it. The catch radius isn't as good as it is with wide receivers, and that throw a little bit high gets tipped up in the air, and oftentimes those are one you think get picked, and certainly Vernon Adams knew that was a blown opportunity able to get there clean Buckner was trying to get his mitts up there here's Richard now on second down as he finds a hole that huge run sets up third and short third and three here quick screen pass but met right away that time was Tim White that was a good play again by Robinson yeah and you know he's a six foot four cornerback you don't see very many of those in college you don't see very many of those in the NFL and that's the advantage they have now putting him in the boundary on those quick bubble screens those receiver screens he's big and physical enough to beat the receiver one-on-one -on -one and make a play 
end over end this time. Not a good looking effort, and it sits right there because of it. This was the scene as the Pat Tillman special edition uniforms were unveiled to the players, honoring the throwback uniform to that 96 Rose Bowl team. Sparky back on there, and the special shoes looking like an army boot, camouflage gloves. You put them together, it makes the PT 42. Here's Adams, little inside screen to Addison, who did a nice job wiggling his way to the 35. Freeman motions out, and it's a quarterback run, and Adams was met and then wrestled back that time. As Simone. Aggressive playing downfield. Now another third and short situation. We saw Arizona State get a stop on the last drive. Can they be physical in the trenches here again? Third and short. Freeman didn't need to be physical. Nothing but green space. Royce Freeman, how about it? They're bringing pressure from this side. This safety's running that way. There is nobody back here for Royce Freeman to hit it. Feast or famine on defense when you bring pressure like they do. Royce Freeman, great job with the vision, good speed. Explosive plays. You know how Oregon likes to strike quickly. 32 drives for touchdowns this year. Now 14 of those drives have been under two minutes or less. This just took a minute 11. Royce Freeman, 64-yard touchdown run. As Oregon is out in front, 10-0. Royce Freeman leads the Pac-12 in rushing. Christian McCaffrey at Stanford, number two. All unbeaten right now, looking really, really good. Of course, Toledo will say something about that out of the Mac, but it's been an impressive conference to watch. Berkovici on first down. As he quickly gets it to Lucian. Safety. They think they got the magic formula that they can stick with the rest of the year. Quick now screen, and it's good enough for the two yards as Tim White will move the chain. Springs again on the coverage there and making a tackle. The reason they had so many issues in the secondary, a lot of it, some of it was injury, but a lot of it was performance. And the biggest problems was a cornerback. You see Arian Springs right now out of the game. He's the starting field corner. They need to get him back on the field. Back to the ground they go. They're able to stack up Balage. Big part of it is this guy right here. He moved over from offense where Charles Nelson was a star playmaker. Great in the return game as well, but Joe, he's got those ball skills, and they think he has the ability to win some of those over the middle of the field and help the turnover margin for this defense. Second and five, Berkovici. Quick strike, complete Lucy and first down, and he shakes free. How about the stiff arm inside the 30-yard line? Up against a true freshman, and Ugo Amati. We talked about Arian Springs not being on the field. Look at number 14, the true freshman. Doesn't come out of the break very well in transition. Isn't able to make a tackle. There's Charles Nelson getting stiff-armed. Good yardage after the catch. Going to take a shot downfield, and this overthrown once again, looking for Lucy. And the flag is down back at the 19-yard line. Defensive holding is... It's against Amadi, true freshman cornerback again. Makes for a first down at the 19. Balage tackled for a loss that time. Receivers two by two for Berkovici on third and four. Balage on the ground. Number 55, extra big body at the point of attack in the second level. First and goal, trying to spin free and only able to pick up a yard. Buckner was the first one there, and then Talia finished it up. Second and goal, that's Tim White in motion as the whistles come in. Second and goal now, play action, Berkovici trying to extend the play, and now decided to tuck and run, and he gets himself to the eight-yard line. That was a coverage sack. D.J. Foster talked about Mr. Versatility. He's over there on the left side of the screen. You see him right here lined up in the slot. 
Third and goal for Berkovici and the Sun Devils. And it was dropped that time as Lucian couldn't hold on. He had put them in position. You see this very often. Devian Lucian is a possession receiver with great hands. It's a back shoulder throw. It's an accurate throw. But again, look who it is. Number three, Tyree Robertson, a six foot four converted safety playing corner. 26 yard attempt for Zane Gonzalez. And he puts it off to the left. He had made seven straight field goals prior to that. time Lou grows a semifinalist. Let's take a look at this snap and hold. The snap looked good. Hold gets down. You know, I thought the laces were out. Hard to tell there, but yeah, I think he just pulled that joke. Walk me through this. Now see if he goes down the target line. Lifts his head a bit, Jess. Didn't keep his head down through the follow through. Head has to stay down all the way, and he failed to do that. So a failed red trip for the Sun Devils. And now Vernon Adams just trying to make the most of it, and he throws it away. And a tremendous job on defense that time, keeping Vernon Adams inside the pocket. We talked about that being a big key. A lot of the explosive plays Oregon has in the passing game come when he escapes. Watch here, he wants to run to his right. Right there, linebacker Fiso doing a nice job keeping him inside. Adams again to pass. Tried to throw back with a middle screen that time as he was looking for Devin Allen. And a timeout used by Todd uh, this Brand. Is a, this is a, you know, what they call an up-tempo defense, where one word and one signal can communicate to all 11 guys on defense what their assignment is. you got to have good communication. That's a good timeout and a critical down and distance, because against this offense, one guy's misaligned could be a long touchdown. Third and 10 after the timeout. They're pressing up coverage. They're showing a little B-gap pressure. Adams launches it on a vertical release and nearly complete that time as he was looking for Dwayne Stanford. Gump Hayes, the return man for Arizona State. As he was taken down right away that time. Berkovici sprinting out with protection and complete as he finds Ellis Jefferson. Could be the final play of this first quarter as Sun Devils with pace there. Flag comes in. Tight end number Five yard penalty. Still first down. So that'll do it. First quarter finished with a missed opportunity for Arizona State. A failed red zone trip with a missed field goal. It started off with Oregon's offense getting working. On a night we celebrate Pat Tillman. Darren Carrington and Royce Freeman starring for the Ducks. Oregon is up 10-0 on Arizona State. Richard trying to cut back against the grain and finally wrestled down at the 47 by Prevo. You know, second straight game now, Jess, where Oregon has held their opponents scoreless in the first quarter. That's not how the first half of the year was. I feel like they're finding their identity a bit again and settling in to this middle portion of the season as they're healthier now. Berkovici on second and 14. A big key on this defense is the guy that got pressure right there in Berkovici. Look at number 44, DeForest Buckner. You don't see a lot of guys that are 6'7", 290 pounds. He's got long arms. It's hard for offensive linemen to get into his body and block him. He's got tremendous athleticism and bend. It's a big reason why a lot of NFL draft gurus have him as one of the top five D linemen available in next year's NFL draft. Yeah, it could have been in last year's NFL draft. Stick around to get his degree was the call for Buckner. Third and 14. Complete for a first down. That's Gary Chambers. Six foot four senior. Good big target. This could be a trick play. But instead of passing, Gamage decides to tuck and run. They wanted to throw this down the sideline. Watch down the right sideline. There's a receiver blocking, but the safety's there to make the play. You Put see him on his rump, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. You know what? You just eat that. You know, obviously, as a play caller, you'd like him to throw that ball out of bounds, but there are a lot of young receivers that would force that football, and that could have been picked. Smart decision. Second and 14 now. Rukovici. And he gets this complete. Middle of the field would be a good option. Third and six. Taken down for a sack. 
as Alex Balducci, who's having a very productive season. Nice job in the pass rush. Watch over here. Or sorry, right over the ball. The nose guard, number 73. It's a, just a pure swim move. Very poor pass protection. Because of that, that makes this field goal an adventure. As good as Gonzalez has been, this is going to have to be a bomb. Listen, he was good from 53 in warm-ups. This from 52. He gave it a good run. Kelly, as you know, they felt confident they potentially could get one on Vernon Adams based on the way he carries the ball. But right now it's Royce Freeman who's going to tuck that away, keep those legs going, and get a good gainer out to midfield. 16-yard run it's good for tough. Royce Freeman. It's good tough running, Joe. But if you're going to run to the perimeter, you've got to be able to seal the edge. And Crosby, the right tackle, 73, did an outstanding job of that. And after that, it's all 21. <laughs> Strong legs, those feet cons consistently churning. Good run on first down. Adams, quick screen this time. As Stanford only gets a couple of yards. And Kaylee, you know, Kaylee mentioned a moment ago, it's really strange that Arizona State hasn't gotten more turnovers because of all the negative plays they create with their pressure. When you get a lot of tackles for losses and sacks, and quarterback pressures, that usually translates into fumbles. It usually translates into interceptions. You would think, Aaron right? Throws. Yeah. And they've always had, been great at turnovers here since Graham's been here. It just hasn't happened this year. Benoit, as the triple option, ends up with a pass to Carrington, who charges ahead. It's going to be... Close to that mark there. Huge threat for Vernon Adams down the field. Third and one. Tackle for loss add to the list, and it comes at a critical time as Christian Sam makes a great, great stop. And you just don't know where it's going to come from. There's linebackers coming all over the place. You got a cross dog here right in the middle. You got a pulling guard who's going to get one of them. That was Fiso, but no one was there to get Sam. We've seen Arizona State in most short yardage situations tonight, in these critical situations. They've been pretty good. Another good stop. Getting the ball back now for this offense that has to do something with it. Had a chance. Kalen Balazs, square those shoulders and run. Field, the right guard did a nice job getting into the second level over here. And there's a 6'3", 230-pound running back going north. This time, a little jump cut and then reaching his way out to the 45, tackled by Robinson. But the running game tonight's been pretty good so far for Arizona State. And I think what you're kind of waiting for now is a play-action shot deep down the field. See if they can take advantage of aggressive Oregon linebackers and safeties trying to crash on the run. Second and three. Here's Richard this time as he goes behind the big block and he gets free inside the 30 and still taking Charles Nelson for a ride. They're, bene they're benefiting. Receiver screen. And Tim White couldn't shake free that time. Check out the clock there on the right side. That's real time in between snaps for Arizona State's offense. Once again, Ball start. offense number 57, five yard penalty, sound. Second and 12, Berkovici, they only bring four, so he has time. And on the sideline at the 19 yard line, that's Cody Cole with the reception. Everything's going to be four down territory, especially in this part of the field. Let's check this out again. Yep. Markovici runs ahead. You have to account for him in the running game. Play action. Berkovici gets it out inside the 10. And that is Tim White, who's tackled by Reggie Daniels. Can they break through now? On the slant. Touchdown. It's an accurate throw from Berkovici, putting it right on the body. You see the cornerback there having inside leverage, but there's no defense for a perfect throw. Take a look. It's close. Looks like that football never touched the ground. He's kind of got it on his body. It's tucked in there in that left arm. 
It bobbles a little bit, but never hit the ground. It's a nice play. Now they're showing that muddle huddle before they swap out to the conventional PAT formation. Devin Lucian's second touchdown reception of the year. And cuts it to a three-point game. That's the Pat Tillman Veterans Center here at Arizona State. Opened in 2011. Single point of contact for veterans and their dependents here on campus. A great academic and student support. Try to smoothen out that transition from the military to back here at ASU. Joe Jesse and Kelly with you. Nelson from the goal line. He makes his way out to the 26. It's been a big night for the 19-year-old Royce Freeman. Only has four carries. <laughs> he already has 80 yards, and you can see he might be 19, but he runs like a man. This guy is possessed. He runs angry, runs hard. Great vision, great feet. Tough guy to bring down. He's one of the best running backs in college football already at a very, very young age. This guy's going to play on Sundays, and he's having himself a night tonight. No, had over 1,300 rushing yards. Last year as a true freshman, fourth in the nation, rushing yards per game in a year of extraordinary running backs. Yeah. Top five, big number seven down in Baton Rouge. Adams gets it to Freeman, and Freeman is met well. Behind their secondary, you can land haymakers and land big plays. They've had a couple big plays on offense. they got to keep that mindset up. Second and ten. They had the isolated coverage that time with Devin Allen, and they take advantage of it. Now they were going with a reverse there to Allen, but. Now, false start. Offense number seven. On penalty, still first down. See this right now, Joe. You see in the crowd, there's a lot of fans that got their phones out, and they're using the flash. Not really sure what that, what, what, why they're doing it. Well, something new here at Arizona State. We've been told this season <laughs> I'm that grab everybody my phone does. Here in a second. I'm gonna join yeah, in. Turn out that on? battery it's before like, your big flight. It's like a, it's like a concert. So backed up to a first and 15 for Adams now. As over the middle, he gets a complete to Braylon Addison, who crosses midfield for a Ducks first down. I've been impressed tonight watching Vernon Adams make throws from the pocket. And I really think for the first half of this year, it's been a one-dimensional passing offense. They're really great when he scrambles, but they've struggled to throw on time downfield accurately three and five steps behind center. It was something Marcus Mariota was so good at doing the last three years, but tonight, Vernon Adams, he's been pretty good behind center. Turns back inside tunnel that is incomplete. See, uh, you, you always see something new from the Ducks. Yeah, you sure do. No, they're, they're, they're innovative. I'll tell you what, these curtains on the sidelines, you see up here? Haven't seen that ever. Covering up those signals coming in to the Oregon offenses. And there were claims by Utah players a couple weeks ago that ASU was stealing signals. We'll tell you what. Todd Graham had a say about that in a moment. Second and ten. That is incomplete. You know, in terms of this stealing of the signals, and you see the signs up on the Oregon sideline, Todd Graham said, hey, stealing signals is not illegal. We don't do anything nobody else does. If it's a big deal, then college football should do what the NFL does and put the headsets in the quarterback helmets. He said Utah's running backs were tipping their screens. We study, we prepare. It's all part of the game. Yeah. Well, it is true, I and mean, they're not the only ones that are, that are trying to get a competitive advantage in games. Oregon definitely taking measures to make sure it doesn't get him tonight. Third and ten. Adams. Can he get there? Brown comes up short that time. Progression. Watch this. He's in the pocket. He's looking left. First read not there. Comes back right. It's not there. He finds his third target underneath. Good open field tackle, and Oregon, no surprise here. They're going to go. They've had issues. They've struggled in these short yarded situations tonight. Fourth down. Adams to pass. Downfield he goes wide open. Touchdown, Carrington. By Arizona State. You got a guy in motion running a wheel. 
You got Stanford number 88 running a shallow, and everybody forgot about Darren Carrington. You know, in Carrington, you know he missed the national championship game. You know the story with last year. Didn't return from the suspension until the last game, but the last three games, has he been something? How, how much different has this offense looked since Vernon Adams has oh. been healthy at quarterback, since they got their best receiver, pure receiver, Carrington back now. The offensive line's healthy again. They're playing a pretty good defense tonight. Right now, Vernon Adams in Oregon on the road. Offside with con contact. Defense number 90. Half the distance to the goal. Try for point. You know the broken index finger that affected his throwing against Michigan State. They numbed it up just so he could play that game. And then missed time subsequently. But now here in midseason, back healthy, back with the full array of weaponry, including Darren Carrington. And the Ducks, 76 straight game with a touchdown pass. That extends their FBS record as they extend their lead here in the desert. Matt Wogan has that big boot. Told you third nationally in kickoff average. Let's go back to that touchdown, Joe. On this play, Arizona State gets outnumbered on defense. You're going to see the receiver coming in motion. At this point right here, they're blitzing this guy. They've got two DBs against three receivers. And everybody forgets about Carrington running the seam right down the middle of the field. This is what happens when you blitz as much as you do. If guys get misaligned. They don't make the appropriate adjustments to motion. You get gashed. And tonight, Oregon's already come up with three explosive plays offensively. There's DJ Foster. Goes for about eight and a half yards. Good news there. right now for Oregon. That's DeForest Buckner, number 44. Looks like he's taking it into the locker room. And we talked about how special and how gifted he is as a defender and defensive end. He's a guy that doesn't come off the field. He plays every snap, every down. He's the heart and soul and leader of this defense. Three and a half sacks in his last two games. Second and one, Berkovici. First down and a bit more, Balaj. To midfield, he goes. He needs to take Balaj here running to the flat. Good read by Berkovici, who's gotten himself in a nice rhythm here these last couple drives. And it tests the left side this time with Balaj, and he goes for 10 and a half yards. There's Berkovici to pass. And he shorted that as Tim White had some real estate. Ended a streak of seven straight completions with that last throw. Here he is on second and ten. As he was pressured and then let it go that time. To beat double teams. Look at number 92 out here. Have to beat two defender or two blockers from Arizona State. Right guard, right tackle. He splits that, stays on his feet. Doesn't make the sack, but he made the play. Forsberger beat you to step up. Berkovici has time and has a man in stride. That's Chambers. Gary Chambers, touchdown, Sun Devils. He gets run right by. He jams Chambers at the line of scrimmage, but without any safety help, he never turned around and sprinted and got depth to cover that deep third area. Got to make these Oregon defenders pay for when they make mistakes like that. Talk a little Heismanology a little later on, oh, Jesse. And I think you're gonna, talking about you're going to see that's Javon your, Boykin and the support he's getting. That's your wheelhouse right there. I'll tell you what. As Royce Freeman and Braylon Addison in the backfield for the Ducks. Adams turns away, being chased. Can he survive it? Throws it left-handed out of bounds. Now he did that earlier this year and completed a pass. <laughs> yeah, he did. Against Michigan State. It was a miracle pass, but, but, but he did it. But this is what we talk about with Vernon Adams and why it's so critical that he's back now in the lineup for Oregon because he can do this. Arizona State is bringing the house. They got guys coming all over the field. They're all over the quarterback. But he just has that knack of escaping with the quickness and a little improvisation with the left hand, whatever it takes. Second and ten now as they go empty with Freeman motioning out. And he gets it complete this time to Carrington. Remember, Carrington had the big play on fourth and one, a 39-yard touchdown. Third down and two. Sacked. 
Edwards. He was looking, looking, looking at Addison. They're bringing one here, one here, and Freeman at running back 21. He's not even sure who to protect. The tight end gets beat, and there you see schedule all these factors that'll that'll be in but we're finally here in November when that poll comes out that's it's a good time see what Arizona State can come up with here mm. that helps right away Devin Lucian see that green line Zane Gonzalez the place kicker he's got Lake talent although he hasn't had a good first half missing from 26 and 52 but could be in position here for another attempt Berkovici Oh, he was looking to run out and leak to that right side, but he was met by two Italia. Arizona State using its final timeout now. Berkovici quickly gets it out, but it was thrown to the inside and a little hot for Lucian. They're almost lining up in like what looks like a prevent almost. Really are. Look at that shell as they shift over a bit here on third and 14. Swings it to Richard out of the backfield. And that green line you see there is the field goal range established for Zane Gonzalez. 54 yard attempt. We know he has the leg strength, but can he put it through? And that is no good. As Royce Freeman will just finish out the first half. By the way, that's only his fifth attempt of the first half as he went for. 80 yards and a touchdown. One of them where they ran the kicker out late before the half. And this is a high rotating kick that'll go for a touchdown. If you're just joining us and you see Tillman across the back nameplate of every Sun Devils player, this is our salute to service game here at Arizona State. And they are honoring the late, great Pat Tillman as Foster will open up the second half for the Sun Devils. It's been a wonderful night of honoring those who serve our country. Pat Tillman, a great example of an American hero, star in the NFL, star with the Sun Devils, as they honor all servicemen tonight. Second and seven now here. Good looking run from Richard. Cuts back and then puts down his shoulder and runs over Tyree Robinson. Well, Demario Richards having himself a very, very nice night. It's been tough, tough running after contact nice job setting up the blocks making people miss again that low center of gravity that physicality that he brings to this offense here's foster now and foster was torn down by henry mondu there is part of the signal graphic being put up by Oregon. Right, We've seen the, them change things up throughout the night. Got the Kanye West defense now. Ooh. Almost intercepted that time. As that was Reggie Daniels, the junior who didn't play against Washington. You got to be so careful, Joe, when you're throwing to the flats and you're throwing late. And that's exactly what Mike Berkovici did on that play, he was trying to get it to DJ Foster. But because he held on to the football so long, it's a long throw all the way across the field and one that safety Reggie Daniels almost came up with. Third down and six now. So now you got DeForest Buckner. He's back out on the field for your defense. Number 44 right here. Good sign. Big pass rush situation. Third and six. A little shallow crossing route is complete for a first down to Jefferson. The game here in the second half. Trying to regain some of this momentum. Richard spinning his way inside the 40 yard line. Tackled by Prevo. This Oregon defense has had a bit of a philosophical shift as the season's gone on. Started the year, they played a lot of man coverage. They were aggressive, but they got gashed. And more recently, they've been a bend don't break defense. Big zones, don't rush a lot of guys, keep the ball in front. Second and six pass this time. That is complete for a first down to Gamage. And this is kind of what they've been doing all night. We talked about Oregon. Now they, they've been getting marched on. We saw, talked about Arizona State having, right now, over 360 yards of offense. But the stat that matters is the point total on the scoreboard. 
Look at the discrepancy in first downs. It's tonight. unbelievable. But, it, you know, when, when it's mattered most, this Oregon defense has stepped up, and that's all that Don Pelham, their D coordinator, cares about. Berkovici with time. Downfield he goes, and this is well overthrown as he had two receivers downfield. It was Lucian and Gamage. Helfrich looks on to see if his defense can hold here. Arizona State with a good looking opening drive of the second half. Option play with a blocker in front as the quick pass goes to Tim White. That was a great looking play. Looks like Arian Springs, their starting field corner. Looks like he's grabbing that right ankle, and that would be a big blow to the secondary. Here's the zone read. This is what Berkovici's reading. They fake the handoff to Foster. He's going to keep it himself, but you see number 33, Tyson Coleman, crashes down on him. So outside wide, Tim White basically becomes a pitch man. He's down there on the sideline with a lead blocker out in front of him to go get the first. A lot of Oregon fans holding their breath on this injury here. This would be big. Medical staff dealing with Arian Springs. We'll take a quick break. First and 10. Read that one and brought it down to the 10 yard line. It's a big part of this and that zone read we talked about with Berkovici. This red zone scenario here, a big part of this game. And we see tonight one touchdown and two trips. Berkovici to the end zone. They've been doing a better job getting home on the quarterback. Here's an opportunity right here. Here is one, third and six. to the outside. Listen, it's muscle memory. You do it time and time again. Just trust in your technique. But it has been a tough night for Zane Gonzalez. This a 28-yard attempt. Missed from 26 earlier. And that time he drills, he drills it. Absolutely drills it through. by Oregon's offense. It starts with Vernon Adams on the very first drive going downtown to Darren Carrington on a post play. Beautiful. Roy, uh, uh, sorry, Royce Freeman. At running back, doing a nice job against the Blitz, breaking off a 64-yard run, and then Vernon Adams takes advantage of a coverage bust. Carrington again down the seam right before the end of the first half. It's been feast or famine, but I'll tell you what, how big is it for this offense getting number three back healthy? No doubt about the it. The way they've looked against Washington in their last game and tonight on offense, that explosive play and that nature, the aggressiveness, what are you hearing, Kaylee? Well, guys, Todd Graham's reaction to those two explosive plays, he said, quite simply, we blew two defensive calls there. Jesse, you pointed out that blown coverage when Carrington went into the end zone. As for that run by Royce Freeman, Graham told me they didn't get the call in. You had two guys running the opposite ways. Flag is down as Gonzalez struck it out to the left. Kickoff out of bounds, kicking team number five. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Oregon. Yeah, you know, you know, studying up on your Temple <laughs> Owls football. It's just, it's just weird to see seven and zero. Oh it is. Beside that name, like, you know, it started with the Penn State yeah. when they had the 10 sacks. Beat down. Beat down against Penn State, and they've carried that momentum right through the American, a conference that is top-heavy with three very good teams. When you include Houston and Memphis, here's Adams. At that time, Kareem Moore, the true freshman. But here's the throw by Vernon Adams, throwing into the slant. It's a little bit high. We talked about high passes over the middle of the field get tipped, and a great job by the true freshman, Kareem Moore. Watch him get under this football with the right hand, scoop it out. Tremendous athletic ability. You can see why this coaching staff is so high on this young true freshman safety. We're going to nominate that with a little hashtag SC top 10. Fantastic eye-hand coordination and athleticism by Kareem Orr. Berkovici. Ball's loose. And who's got it? He had two linemen fighting for it as Tyson Coleman came in hard on Mike Berkovici. The Oregon Ducks have had the better pass rush tonight. Tyson Coleman came flying around the right tackle, William McGahey. This is a huge play here in a sudden change situation. Could Oregon get the football back? It's Tyson Coleman, number 33, out here. Working one-on-one -on -one against the right tackle, McGahey. 
Just kind of hesitates, and Brukovici just doesn't get the football out of his hands. That's Wait, on the quarterback, yeah. And then the ball's loose, and it looked like V. Teofilo was able to jump on that, their right guard. 20th fumble. They've been lucky. They've only lost eight all season. Mario Richard, he is taken down by Buckner back in the game. Fourth sack by the Oregon Ducks. Berkovich's clock has to go off. He's sitting there, he's holding on to the ball. It's bad ball security holding onto the football with just one hand. And here is the recovery. I don't know how he got this. He got his right paw on it, fought it away from two Oregon defenders. Third and 14. What an effort that time coming back for the ball, Gary Chambers. So they're reviewing this play. After review, really on the field stand. Fourth down. Fullback. Now they empty the Look backfield. Empty yeah. They've got an interesting little play here that they can run. They also have a quick kick, mind you, with Berger Beachy. Penalty flag comes in. Holding an eligible receiver. Defense, a 10-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Happens right in the middle of the 40. It's right here in the middle. Watch. It's kind of a trick play. They got the tight end lined up at tackle in an, in an awkward formation. He just kind of grabs him around the waist. It's not pass interference. So they convert the fourth down by way of penalty. And now here goes Richard. Demario Richard. Touchdown. Arizona State takes the lead. You got the center pulling, getting a kick out. You get your right tackle coming all the way around, and creating a seam for Richard to run right through. He was not even touched until he was in the second level. Jeff's first lead of the game for the Sun Devils. So a lot to be determined in this conference, the Pac-12. For now, Stanford's 5-0 in conference play. You got two teams at 2-2, two two, desperate to stay alive. How about Vernon Adams taking a shot and almost connecting that time with Devin Allen? That was broken up by Kareem Orr, the true freshman <laughs> who had the interception Orr. moments ago. Man, he is having himself a half right now. This was very close to being a coverage bust. Kareem Orr almost ran with the wrong receiver, and at the very last second, turned around and found Devin Allen, and a great job breaking it up. I cannot say enough about Orr 25. There have been a lot of times this year he's had coverage busts, and he's hurt this defense, but this true freshman is playing lights out here in the second half. Young man from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Adams incomplete off the hands of Addison. There was a personal foul of unnecessary roughness on Smallwood, and that has Graham irate, and that has a first down for Oregon out to the 40-yard line. Wow. And it is loud here at Sun Devil Stadium, and these Ducks are looking to respond. And around this time, it is Carrington. Carrington with blockers in front, passes midfield, Tiptoed, stepped out of bounds. But a good gain for Darren Carrington, who has come up big already tonight. I like the play call on off. Carrington is having himself a ball game tonight, Joe. He's been targeted four times. He's got four catches for 100 yards and a touch. And now that big reverse run. First down at the 39. Freeman. Trying to cut back against the grain, but he is wrestled down that time to Demetrius Cherry. But I think they need to give him the ball more now, Joe. Agreed. He, that's only his sixth carry of the game. And I appreciate that Oregon's come out. They're being aggressive. They're not afraid to throw against the blitz. But this guy's one of the best running backs in all of college football. He has to get his touches. Fourth of the nation in yards per game, but limited carries tonight. Here's another inside screen. Addison, here he goes! Inside the 20 and thrown forward by Simone. So the Ducks are on the move. It was a great catch by Addison. You're going to see him climb the ladder and get this. But I want you to also notice bodies downfield. You got 62 Pearson, you got 81 Bayless getting blocks out in front of him. Scott Frost doing a nice job with the play call here on this possession. 
Cross this time hands off to the big back Freeman who muscles his way inside the 12. Second and eight. Adams. How did he survive that? Wasn't wrapped up at all, just bounced off of it. And then goes out. Well, you have to finish the play. If you're Arizona State, there's a late flag, Joe. It may be a little bit of frustration. Well, oh, he's losing uh, his balance yeah. a bit as he yeah, came yeah. in. I think a good acting after job. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number 32. After the distance to the goal, with an automatic first down. Yeah, he definitely pulled up. He, yeah. went, he was actually trying to hold Vernon Adams up. It was a good acting job by Vernon Adams right in front of the referee. Watch this. For a great job escaping a sack. Just kind of goes out and, yeah. The academy goes too. So first and goal as Oregon looks to tie things up here on the road. Forward progress of Freeman stopped at the five yard line. There's just so many ways this offense can stress you down here in this situation in close. They can run the ball, the 21 Freeman. Vernon Adams can keep it himself. They can bring in Braylon Addison into the backfield. They just too many weapons spread across the field and just the entire playbook open for Scott Frost. Biggest target is flexed out on the near side. That's the 6'6", 250 Bayless. Second and goal. Adams looks back, extends to this side. And a flag is down as he threw it in the direction of Dwayne Stanford. Pass interference. Offense number 88. A 15-yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, Dwayne Stanford was actually downfield trying to get a block. I think he thought it was going to be a wide receiver screen to his side. Look at 88 here at the bottom of the screen. I think he thought Braylon Addison was going to be getting the ball behind him. No doubt. So when Vernon Adams held on to the football and threw it downfield, that's an easy call. That's a big self-inflicted wound. Well, that's the danger of extending the play. Exactly. If it doesn't go on tempo on the first thing, you got guys blocking downfield, yeah. and he's extending it into a pass play. Second and goal now as they are backed up at the 20-yard line. Adams looking for a throwback, oh. almost intercepted by Smallwood. Was that dangerous, Jesse? He was looking for Bayless, and Smallwood was Velcro to him. And I think Vernon Adams thought he had a big play. And look, Arizona State showed a corner blitz to the boundary from this side. They backed out of it late. Vernon Adams just turns around here and tries to force this in. And Smallwood with a huge opportunity, right, Joe, to atone for that personal foul penalty he had earlier on in the drive. Third and goal. Where is the pressure coming from from Arizona State? Incomplete. Far beyond Carrington that time. So what was such a promising drive all of a sudden was put into reverse. Walk on kicker who wasn't expected to win the job, but has been steady and reliable. Made from 24 earlier, this from 37. So they get three out of it. And Tim White's going to let the Matt Wogan kick go over his Already head. Already come away with 10 points here, halfway through the third. Quick pass to Tim White, who's dangerous in spots like that. You see, he has elite speed and goes for 11 it's yards. It's so hard to defend. We saw this on their last drive, too. It's the zone read with that attachment on the outside. The ball could be three different places at the same time. You can hand it off, quarterback can keep it, or you pitch it out wide. You can't be right if you're a defense. Here's Kalen Balaj had a huge hole. Passes midfield, inside the 35, and down to the 30-yard line. Running over Charles Nelson at the end of that. 34-yard run the from Milan. The line gets great movement on the nose guard, Balducci. That created the massive hole for Balaj to run through. Kukovici was under pressure, diving effort that time by Tim White is incomplete. Second and 10, as Foster and Balaj are in the backfield. 
with Berkovici. And he's going to read this, and he puts his shoulder down and goes ahead for a gain of three. There's a big play right here as Mike Norvell looks on the offensive coordinator. This offensive line has to give Berkovici time to locate a wide open receiver, and Berkovici has to have a clock in his head to get rid of the football. He's been holding on to it a bit too long at times tonight. Third and six. First down, and inside the two yard line, DJ Foster. First and goal, Arizona State. And they bring in their jumbo package. Big number 76 is lined up as an extra tight end on the left side. Touchdown, Richard. Berkovici to Demario Richard. And the Spartans, boy, do they have Uncle Mo. Momentum's on their side. Nice job by Richard. Faking as if he's going to block Tyson Coleman, the linebacker on the perimeter of the field, and then sneak him right by him. Stymie up to the linebacker here. Make it look like he's slowing down. I'm going to block him. Nope, right by. Easy throw and catch. Charles Nelson on the return. And here goes Charles Nelson. Watch out. Charles Nelson kickoff return. Touchdown, Ducks. Charles Nelson moved from offense to defense, but they never took him off special teams. Good reason why. One of the best in the country. Watch him set the blocks up and then make the kicker miss. That is a nightmare for Zane Gonzalez, who's already had a rough night. He's missed three field goals. He had a kickoff out of bounds. You think about that well-managed drive by Arizona State. And then all it takes is brilliant speed and talent. Just a nice job kind of setting up the return, making it look like he's running to the middle of the field and then cutting it back to the right sideline where he had all his blocks. You mentioned it, Joe, way too much speed. Whether it's him, Braylon Addison, they've got guys that can hurt you and they can change the complexion of a game on one play. And that's exactly what Oregon did right there. It was literally an 11 point game seconds ago. Not anymore. You could make a strong argument that he's their best overall player in terms of how he contributes. Team's third leading receiver comes over to the defense made a team high 12 tackles and two passes broken up when he started against Washington State in special teams absolutely dynamic just when they needed it right there he delivers and it is back to a four point margin Nelson's first career kickoff return for a touchdown he's done it by way of punt return two times they're getting chunk yardage and that's why they're lighting the scoreboard up right now. Here's Balage. Back and forth they go. Balage, he just steamrolled him. Pulling the center and the backside tackle. But look at this 230 pound, six foot three running back. Stays in bounds, it looks like. We may have to take a review of that. It looks like that right foot may have gotten out. And here's a six four corner with no momentum. And Tyree Robinson, he gets put on his hood. Spotting the ball at the 42. As they stay on the ground here. It looked to me like Balaj may have stepped out way before that. Some that running him close. over. Yeah. See, I think right there, that was the one that I was kind of thinking about. I'm surprised they didn't take a look at it, but give them credit. They got lined up quickly and kept playing. Second and five. Berkovici wants all of it here. And it goes through the hands of Lucian, who had a turnaround with Arian Springs in his face. You know, a couple of hundred yard rushers now for Arizona State. Balaj now has 127. Richard has 109. You know, in the last two games, Joe, they haven't been a great running team. Even against Colorado, certainly against Utah a few weeks back, the offensive line hasn't been doing a very good job establishing the point of attack. But this group up front, let's give them some credit. They've been doing a great job getting push, climbing into the second level, and opening up some lanes. Third and five. Foster motions out. Berkovici, a rush of four. And he was met that time as Buckner got in on him. By their nose guard. 
That was Malata, Malata, there. Yeah. I mean, it, just unbelievable that this came from right Boston in his lap and there was nowhere to run. And then Buckner finished him off. It's the fifth sack, Joe, for Don Pelham in this defense. On the 10, reverse rotation to try to pin it here. As the fair catch at the 13, and the flag comes in as he was surrounded. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick. Kicking team, number 25, a 15-yard penalty. First down, Oregon. Well, the rule is when a guy's making a fair catch, kick-catch interference, you have to be out of the area, right, basically right in front of the returner, defined by as a yard in front of him and in between his shoulder pads, and that's exactly where Kareem Moore found himself. It's a good call, mistake, by the young true freshman safety who's made a lot of plays tonight on defense. getting a carry now and he does a nice job of nearly eight yards on the run. Can I Benoit sophomore from right here in Phoenix. I think Oregon has to get back to this running the football more. They've been a pass heavy offense in this game and whether it's Freeman or any of these backup runners they need to hand it off. Second and two Benoit again picks up a block. Turns on the speed. Could he? How about it, folks? We got back and forth here in the desert. Good stuff by the Ducks. Key block on this play by wide receiver Darren Carrington having a big game. Catching the ball. He had a big reverse recently on a drive. But watch seven on the perimeter down here against number eight, Lloyd Carrington. Not related. Just gets him tied up enough to spring Benoit and all that speed. I think if you're Oregon, remember, for years now, yeah, you've scored a lot of points, but the bread and butter of this offense is running the football. They got to continue to do that here in the second half. 62-yard touchdown run. Nai Benoit, and just like that, just when Arizona State seemed to have all the momentum. And here's Tim White who's very dangerous himself. And Tim White kept his balance there somehow. Got to stop giving up these explosive plays. And Big DeForest Buckner back out on the field. Pressure back on Arizona State. Mike Berkovici offensively. Mario Richard. Nice job by Richard to get himself to the 40-yard line. A gain of seven. Get on the ground, cut back against the grain, and was met after a gain of only one yard that time as Hardrick was in on the tackle. They got a stack formation with Foster to the top of your screen. Now he comes in motion on third and two. And they were trying to drag Bellage. Instead, it opens up for Berkovici. Last play of the third quarter as Richard is running hard. A little bit of fun out here. And they'll enjoy that as Perkovici takes it ahead for a first. Perkovici has 281 yards passing and three touchdowns. Contributing where he can on the ground, and this was all too easy. Out in the slot, running a wheel route. Prevo tries to redirect him. Just too much quickness by the former full-time running back. To the near side this time. And not much there at all. One at a time. Second and ten, play action. Bergovici. That was just a lot of traffic. Gonzalez, one of four kicking field goals tonight. Third and 11. Intercepted that time. Reggie Daniels. I think he thought that DJ Foster was going to break that underneath. Let's go back and take a look at the action. Caught this, Joe. It's extremely close. Reggie Daniels appeared to have got his hands underneath that. Did the ground help him catch this football? Check it out. Got it there in the body, it appears as though, but I don't know if he completely controlled it. 
We well, it looked like you could see time. his green gloves between the ball and the grass here. Watch the gloves. Let's yep. see if that helps out. And it's in the chest. Ball's allowed to touch the ground, but he has to have full possession of the football and control of it throughout the process. See, the hands come off the ball there late, Joe. Yep. Especially the left hand. Kind of gets caught up into his wrist. Get the, they get the field position. The field position. Yes. Now, if it's overturned, it's going to be fourth and 11 at the 15, and they can go ahead and attempt to tie this game up with a field goal. You can see the tip of the ball undoubtedly moves there, Jess. I just don't know that you have the evidence to say whether or not the hand is in between the tip of the ball and the grass. After review, the ruling is the ball hit the ground. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Fourth down. You see the disappointment with Reggie Daniels. To tie the game from 33. And he does. Royce Freeman. Sensational sophomore in the backfield with the graduate transfer, Vernon Adams. And here is pressure. And Adams can't get free at the 15-yard line as that was Wakiola. You just don't know. I mean, just ju judging by, there's linebackers. They're coming from the right. They're coming from the left. They've got Vernon Adams completely surrounded. He was almost able to somehow get out. Empty set here now. Pressure again as he quickly gets it out to Stanford. Here he is here at the bottom of the screen. Third and 19. And they're going to go underneath to Addison, who's going to need a little more than that as he is ridden out of bounds by Solomon Means. Get Lyman going outside. They're double teaming number 17, Murphy Richardson. Make sure that Adams has time to get rid of that football. I'll tell you, Braylon Addison. He's able to make one of those guys miss. He could have converted that. And he does turn that one over as Gump Hayes from inside the 25. And the coverage was able to find him. Richard, not much that time as Hardrick filled that hole. Week in, week out, but tonight they've been pretty good. Second and seven. Berkovici tonight on third down has been solid. They run again, and they do get it that time. 48, you're going to see him. He has an opportunity to make this play right there, but he doesn't even bring his arms. He doesn't wrap. He just kind of threw his shoulder in there. He's not going to get it done. There's that quick toss off the option. Tim White, I mean, he's got pure raw speed and thrown down out of bounds by Charles Nelson. Tim White on the perimeter, fake the handoff. You run outside, attack the linebacker Coleman, make him commit to you, and when he does that, now you've got a blocker out in front of White. They've had a lot of success every time that Mike Norvell has dialed that play. The read option with the attachment went for 29 yards that time. Richard. Second and six, quick pass inside the 10, down to the five, Devin Lucian. First and goal. Well, he tried to get it right on Gamage. Yeah. Well, this is a slant throw. Again, one of these big body type deals right over the line of scrimmage. He just kind of is able to swat that thing away. That's all this uh, after a few of those peanut butter banana sandwiches. Blue suede shoes in Vegas. That all makes sense, Jeff. Second and goal. Alternate universe play call. <laughs> what an effort. Nope. But he couldn't haul it in. It's kind of outside. This is a catchable ball. It's the back shoulder throw again by Berkovici, and Foster just could not secure this play. Now tonight, Oregon is forced... Arizona State to kick three field goal attempts inside the red zone on five tries. What can they come up with here? Third and goal. Berkovici throw back, wide open. Money, Cody Cole. Watch 83 down here at the bottom of the screen. He's going to come out of his three-point stance, fall down on the ground, act as if he was trying to cut block. He gets up quickly. The Oregon defense have completely lost him. To the Mackey Award watch list a few weeks ago. And that was award-winning execution right there. You have it, Von Jess. There, kept it at the bar. One of his last days as a civilian. Paid a visit to the bar, told the staff, hang on to the glass. I'm going to be back.
It remains there to this day, right where it was left. And folks go in there, they buy a pint for Pat, and all the proceeds go to the Pat Tillman Foundation. Not a chance to play against him in the National Football League. When I played on the New York Giants, we used to play against the Arizona Cardinals. And what an honor to get a chance to play against a guy that stands for what he does, for his family, for his teammates, his coaches, and for his country. Just a remarkable, not just a remarkable football player, he's a remarkable human being. This is great to see the way that this school has honored him. You know, they received permission from the NCAA to have Tillman on the nameplates of every single player tonight. Here's Charles Nelson. Remember, he went for 100 yards earlier tonight. And there's a slant batted away that time. Vernon Adams now on second down, stumbling and goes down at the 24 and 15. Coming off the edge. Adams stays up, goes downfield. Oh, and it goes through the hands of Darren Carrington. How, how, how? Wow. Wow on two fronts. Because you watch this thing live, and it looked like Adams was A, going to get sacked. And then once he gets out of that, Carrington on a busted coverage runs right by everybody on defense. Right there, number 10. Quishy Brown falls down, and that goes right through his hands. Look at that. I don't know. How does Adams get out of this? Somehow he's able to do that. And Carrington, who's had the biggest night on offense for Oregon tonight, comes up with the biggest missed opportunity. Makes a big Ducks bounce that time. No doubt about it. And he's had a big night. But not there. Still trailing by seven. Like this, as he dives ahead. Gives you a lot of credit because he's been resilient and he's waited his turn. This is a guy as a true freshman. He beat out Taylor Kelly and Brock Osweiler, who's on the Broncos now, as a true freshman. But then Dennis Erickson gets fired as head coach. In comes Todd Graham and a brand new offense. He loses a three-way quarterback competition. But in an era where so many quarterbacks want to transfer, he decided to stay, fight it out, and here he is playing maybe the game of his life. And another first Call in out. basketball, my friend. 45% <laughs> of the entire sport transfers based on playing time. Good strike over the middle. Another first down past midfield. Over the middle. Look at all the Oregon defenders. This ball zips by because he's late throwing it. He's staring it down. And number 35, Joe Walker. 666 yards of total offense. Most they've had in nearly 10 years. Downfield. This time intercepted by Robinson. Tyree Robinson, and he loses the ball and gets it back. And they think they have an offside. They don't move, and I think that's what Berkovici thought he had right here. I think he thought he had a free play, so he just chucked the football deep down the field. And there's Tyree Robinson, who's made a lot of plays tonight early, also gave up a touchdown pass. Look at the left side of the defense here. It looks like there's a flinch. It looked to me like there might have been an offside. It was never called. Hand off to the inside with Royce Freeman, who is stacked up as Smallwood in the game. Here comes pressure. And there goes Adams. They've got 25 to 30 of these in their back pocket. Calhoun ate up the block. Third and 16, Jess, here we go. Harrington in motion. That missed opportunity moments ago. Adams gonna launch it downfield and it is caught by Freeman over the shoulder into the hands and the Ducks stay alive. Watch him drop back here. He's looking to his left. He's gonna have a body. His own guard actually kind of hits him. He just is able to slide and just drops that right down the chimney into Freeman's hands. 28 yards on third and 16. Clock counting down. Adams 
Sprinting. Quick strike complete to Carrington. Putting a tired defense back on the field. Second and three, Addison in motion. They swing it over to Addison. Does he get the block? Stay in bounds? No. Forced out. Third and two. As Arizona State showed edge pressure. So he checks at the line. Freeman and Addison in the backfield with him. Low snap. They're going to pass here, and Addison is sacked. Throw it down the field. There's a lot Holding. of... Defense, number eight. It's yeah. not going to matter. A 10 yard penalty results in the first down. They got Carrington, Lloyd Carrington, on the hold. Yeah, they did. Watch here on the perimeter. You got a big 6 5 receiver in Stanford trying to get by what him, and think? Carrington just grabs him by the jersey. Ball's not thrown, doesn't matter. Vernon Adams, grad transfer, looking for a thrilling finish here to tie up this game. Overthrowing Addison that time. Second down. Here comes pressure right up the middle. Able to get it out hot to Freeman. Freeman looking to make a move, makes one cut and reaches towards the 11 yard line. Giving Vernon Adams to find the flat route here. Look, they're bringing a cross dog up the middle to bring an edge pressure. The nice communication up front, making sure they get a hat on a hat. That sets up third and very short. Big number 21's in that backfield with Vernon Adams. As they're going to go, splitting Adams out and leaving Freeman for the direct snap. And I don't know that he had the effort to get there. This looks like he's going to be short. Vernon Adams. Quick huddle break here. Then he looks over as he's flanked by the big, burly, 230-pound Royce Freeman. Will it be Freeman trying to muscle his way, or does Adams have something up his sleeve? Diving ahead that time. Five sacks on the night. They've been in the backfield for most of the second half. Who could make a play for Arizona State's defense at this critical juncture? First and goal. Here comes pressure. Fakes the end around. Adams, can he escape it? Gets it quickly out and incomplete. And up top, solo action. Second and goal. Vertical release. Almost intercepted by Brown as he was looking for Dwayne Stanford. About this play, Dwayne Stanford became the defender. He's running a fade route, but the football gets thrown inside. So watch him break this up with his left arm. That could have easily been intercepted. That could have been ball game. the ball outside on the move. Here they are with Addison again. Launches it. That's the second time we've seen that from Braylon Addison. He's been back in the lineup. He's been their biggest playmaker at wide receiver, especially down the field. He's a good size at 6'2", 195 pounds. He's working one-on-one -on -one at the bottom of the screen. If there's no safety help, Simone right now lined up to that side. He goes back to the middle of the field, and I think that's where Adams is going to look. Here's your ball game. Fourth and goal. Adams once again extending the play. Does he have a miracle left in him? Launches it. Two players come together, and it is scored Dwayne Stanford. Oh, my. But what a job by Stanford going up and making it his football. I'm watching that and I'm thinking, you know, that might get knocked out of his hands by his own teammate. And a timeout is called by Arizona State. And you want to look at the back line of the end zone here. See that hand touches down first, though. Oh, I'm looking at Munt, 83. Now watch, watch the, this again. Watch the backside, my friend, of Stanford. Well, elbows, yes, forearms yeah, down. That's what I'm saying. Backside's down. You yeah. don't even have to worry about the right leg. That's a touchdown. That's just an incredible play. We've seen two remarkable scrambles late in this game by Vernon Adams. One on the drop to Darren Carrington. Just watch this again. I mean, this looks like Arizona State has this play stopped. They're bringing two guys off the edge to the right, a guy up the middle. He's trying to go to Carrington at first. He buys the time. 
Here he's got to start running backwards and just heaves this thing across his body. Just a headsy, headsy play by the Eastern Washington transfer to give his team an opportunity to push this thing into overtime here on the road. That's just unbelievable. And how about that? Dwayne Stanford earlier knocked the ball away from what looked like could have been an interception. Well, now he comes back and makes an unbelievable catch and trap. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Arizona so, State is charged with timeout, and, and they may not challenge for the remainder of the game. They turn to the foot. Taylor Alley, the holder. Tanner Carew, the snapper. And the foot of Schneider to tie it. One more time, Stanford and Munt collision course, and Stanford will make it happen, Jess. It's just all desire and want to. Defense gets outflanked. It's a great play by Vernon Adams, keeping it alive. Flows and momentum shifts. Starts with Richard here in this long run by Arizona State. Berkovici rolling out, hitting Richard in the flat. Right when they had that 11 point lead, it looked like they were kind of pulling away. And then Charles Nelson, the receiver that got moved to safety, takes a kick return to the house. You got Ben Waugh on a long run down the sidelines that erases the lead. Berkovici answers with a touchdown pass to his tight end, Cody Cole. And then Vernon Adams on this ridiculous scramble play on a fourth down with time running out. Wow. You don't give the return man a chance here. Hey, that's a. That's a live ball right there. That was dangerous for a moment right there. I'll just take a knee here and send this thing to overtime. You know, Jess, everything was so even coming into tonight, right? Both teams with high expectations all Winner summer. Of the toss will have the option of going on offense or defense, or which end of the field will play on. Captain, what is the call? The call is tails, and it is head. Defense. Which end of the field? Which side? Stay true to your identity as they motion out Freeman Adams empty set. Look at the time he has and he gets the completion and one cut and guess who it is again? Dwayne Stanford touchdown on the first play of overtime. And Arizona State decided not to blitz that time. And Vernon Adams had all day in the pocket to just survey the field. They bring four guys. This is the easiest pass rush Oregon's offensive line has had to stop. You see they got a double team on one guy. There's time for Vernon Adams to look down the field. And he hits the man of the minute right now in Dwayne Stanford. How about that for your, for your overtime offensive oh. series? A one play, touchdown. Dwayne Stanford had a better 12 seconds of football in his career than the last 12. Two big bodies on the perimeter. Stanford and Carrington. So can Arizona State match here? Berkovici, as he was trying to find something, but all he found was Rodney Hardrick. Here, Berkovici, great read by Berkovici. And he is inside the 10, first and goal. Yeah, read the, the edge rusher off the side, and that was Prevo number 86. He came screaming down the line of scrimmage. Linebacker Joe Walker. Now defensively, they played a ton of snaps. Now 99. Just how much do they have left in the tank? First and goal. Berkovici with time, now being pursued to the end zone and throws it away as it was Buckner who was giving chase. Flag is down. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. to play first down. Next to the 13 yard line. First and goal. Berkovici. Over the middle. We have two men in the area. This is the 101st play for Arizona State. Quick strike inside to the two-yard line to D.J. Foster. Charles Nelson came flying up, and I think he saved a touchdown right here. Number six, the safety right over the middle of the field. Watch how quickly he reacts to the slant. If he doesn't get there for that tackle, I don't think number eight, Daniels, is able to make the stop. Richard in the backfield with Berkovici. Third and goal. They're going to pass. 
Here's White. Can he get there? Reaches. Touchdown. What an effort by Tim White, the Juco transfer. He's being wrapped up. Stretches that football out over Ooh. the goal line into the pylon. Tremendous job. Nice answer by Arizona State. And that's where we are. Who has five touchdown passes. And they flip rolls in double OT. And once again, Berkovici running the ball. Foster and Richard in the backfield. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Coleman and Buckner. One of these wide receivers has to win. This is a pass play. Someone's got to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup across the board. Third and three. Quarterback run. He's got it and more. Inside the five. Diving into the end zone. The big night for Mike Berkovici continues. Richard get downfield and get a block for him at running back. The offensive line sells pass. There's the lane. And look at number four. Hat on a hat. There were two blocks down the field, actually, for Berkovici to take advantage of. He's made plays tonight with his arm. He's made a lot of plays tonight with his legs as well. That was his 16th carry on the night. And Gonzalez. Well, he's given a lot. He's given a lot tonight. Yeah, he sure has. Berkovici. Put his body on the line. It's... 376 yards on 50 pass attempts, five touchdowns, and moments ago, a touchdown run, 58 yards rushing. But you have the feeling we're not done yet. As Vernon Adams. And the Ducks are back out there. And they will start with Freeman. And Royce Freeman now with a first down on the first play of double overtime. They need to dial up the pressure. Here it comes. Here he goes again. As he bounces his way inside the 10, the defensive side of things, as it's second and four in Oregon, looks like they're going downhill. And here he goes again, this time wrapped up. Adams to pass on third down. Now comes forward. Can he get to the edge? Adams diving ahead. Touchdown, Vernon Adams. Watch this effort as he's trying to push this football across the line. The elbow Forearm goes passes down. Being down. Yep, and it looked like it hit the ground before the football broke the plane. Right there, that elbow looks like it touches first. I think that's where they're going to spot the football. The play of touchdown is under further review. Can't say enough again about Vernon Adams and his scrambling ability. Just again, it looked like he was going to get stopped in the backfield. He's able to kind of squeeze his way and find a hole up the middle of the field. Simone at safety has a chance to make a tackle. He makes a miss. This is a tremendous effort. Well, they ruled on the field that it was a touchdown, but it thinks it's pretty obvious that they will reverse this and we will be settling into a first and goal for Oregon. I love the grittiness of Adams in a spot like this. I do too. You know, you know what he did to push it to overtime. The desperation fourth down heave with 12 seconds to go and then opened up overtime with the touchdown pass. And then trailing by seven to go out and just ball like that. I like the grittiness to the decision to come and transfer to Oregon. I really do. I give him credit for Agreed. that. Agreed. You know, he took a lot of hit. He should, yeah, he took still a lot is. of heat back home at After Eastern Washington. Review, the ruling is the runner was short at the goal line. The ball will be placed one half yard from the goal line. First and goal. These are the moments why. Exactly. I know they've caught losses. I know he's been injured. But it's moments like this that the payoff of transferring and asking yourself what does it look like on the biggest stage for me he gets to find out here we go with first and goal the Matt Hager to the center going up and down the line of scrimmage making sure everybody knows what the call is trying to make sure everybody's communication is right Freeman just 
walks his way in. A little something extra there between a couple linemen, but that was Matt Haggerty, the center. We Notre are Dame right transfer. now. Oh, they got a good surge in on him, didn't they? A stack formation here with Freeman, and now he motions out and flags are down. He had early movement on the offensive line. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, go first down. First and 15 now backed up to the 30 for Adams. Looks one way, and now the quick feet. Oh, he's looking to extend the play. Can't take a big loss in a spot like this. Survives it somehow, gains yardage, cuts back inside the 20. How did he pull that off, Jesse? It's incredible, but Joey's done it time and time again tonight. It's like a, it's like Houdini. First you see him, then you don't. Look, I mean, just, it's like playground football. He's holding in his left hand, stretching it out. Unbelievable. Second and five now. To the end zone he goes. Was he in? They're talking it over. No. Touchdown! Ooh. Braylon Addison! They say somehow, some way, he got his foot down. Long conversation by the referees. I didn't think he was in. Watching that in real time. Nor did I. No, and I'm, I'm shocked it took that long. Watch this. Left foot. Yeah, that toe looks like it's. it's yeah, well, on guess the line. what, though? You better have the video evidence to say so because they've called it a touchdown on the field. This will be the look right here. Oh, maybe There's not. There's a camera lens There's a in the way. There's a camera in the way. There's a camera in the way. But, you know, but it looks like even with that. And you see the white there on that tip of the toe. There's enough for me looking right there at that to say that's indisputable that he's out. Of course, we had a play earlier in the game that you and I thought we didn't have the indisputable video. This is a good look right here, Jess. This should give you a good look. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's the better look. It's hard to tell. You see that snap zoom in there. You see white on the front toe there, yeah, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's enough from the, the angles we've seen. It's Listen, close. To your point, in real time, yep. neither one of us are saying touchdown there. No. He's touching the white. Here's an even better look, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, this, this will be even better. Still close. I'll tell you, it's still close. I think, I think the other angle is the best angle with the camera in front. I really do. It's so close, man. Game of inches. And again, call in the field. Touchdown. You, you can't have any doubt whatsoever. If it's overturned, it's going to be third and five at the 20. For now, it's an Oregon touchdown, and 61 See? points are on the board. I just think right there, looking at that, like that part is the front part of his toe, and it's it's out of bounds. You got to get this right. So as many looks as it takes for the replay officials to look at. After review, the really on the field stand. Wow. Touchdown. Look that is that. Vernon Adams. And yeah, they got Braylon Addison, Joe, playing in the quarterback slot. in the wildcat. Braylon right Addison now. is wildcat for their two-point conversion. That is Addison behind center. Think Arizona State saw that. With Royce Freeman trips to the top. And now in motion comes Vernon Adams. He fumbles the snap, tries to survive it, and is taken down. Nothing went right. On the snap, I mean, that hits him right in the middle of the stomach. He took his eyes off of it. Now that the whole timing of the play is disrupted. And you got a guy who doesn't play quarterback every right. snap out there and, on a and, critical snap of the game. And by the way, two point conversion. Vernon Adams, he might be able to get out of that with the way he's been scrambling. I mean, I just, I don't know why you would take him out from behind center. It's Vernon Adams hasn't playing. had a struggle with a, a shotgun snap all game. No. Play action, Berkovici. Wide open, Tim White. He had the big play stretching it across, and now he sets up first and goal. Berkovici, slid. Oh, boy, that was almost a game closer. Going to pass again. Intercepted. Arian Springs, game over. Good night. Arizona State, the Ducks are soaring.
I think on this play on defense for Oregon, this is a better play at corner by Arian Springs.